Hello, this is the Animation Fanatic. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I completely forgot that I had missed the... I, I didn't notice this. I'd missed the sixth episode of The Legend of Korra, season two. And, yeah, I can't believe I missed that. But So here it is. Here's my review of that episode. I'll follow this up with the ninth, uh, the, the ninth episode of season two, along with um, my review of... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the most recent episode. No reviews of Beware the Batman because it's not back yet. Um, there's talk of it possibly being canceled due to poor ratings. But Teen Titans Go is still on. Now, sometimes I wonder about our country. A lot. And about our generation. And about Batman fans who gave a pass to Brave and the Bold and the Batman. I actually like parts of those series, but still, we get our first really, really serious Batman since the original series, since the animated series, and you know what, I'm going on a tangent here, this is supposed to be about Korra, so here's my review of The Legend of Korra, episode 6, The Sting. Um, this is not a Korra-centered episode, so if you're ho hoping for Korra, you'll be disappointed. The last, the only part we see of her is her on the beach, uh, not knowing who she is. Um... Basically, this episode centers around Mako and Asami trying to catch people who have been raiding Future Industries, her company, and taking a lot of her shipments. Uh, and, yeah, that's what the episode mostly focuses on. It also focuses on Bolin sort of becoming a star. He's used for comic relief. He hasn't been doing much very serious in this series. He's just been, like I said, comic relief. And that's what he does. He's becoming a star. He's trying to hit on his co-star. Uh, it's, it's really funny. It's got this old-timey, cheesy feel to it. It's, it's, it's fun to see. I've always stated I like the odd 1920s steampunk world that Korra is set in, and, and this really reflects that with some of the technology. Um, so anyway, yeah, Future Indices is being raided. Uh, Mako wants to find out who did it, and also wants to find out who the firebenders were who caused the previous explosion. And yeah, they set up a sting. But they're double-crossed by the gang that they hire to help them, because the police won't help them. And it turns out Osami's warehouse is completely looted. However, at the end of it, Varric ends up buying a controlling share, and we believe that he's possibly in on the whole thing, and he was trying to get a controlling control of Asami's company, so he and also incite the war between the North and the South so he could make money. I'm actually combining stuff in from episode nine that I just heard, so I won't get too much into detail. But basically he's behind a lot of the bad stuff happening. Also we see Cora's uncle is pretty mad at her cousins for not finding her. So that's the basic part of this episode. What do I think about it? It was pretty decent. Um it explore it I didn't think it explored enough the relationship between Asami and Mako. It they kissed, but it was not... It seemed a little sudden, and I was just wondering about them. It seemed like it wanted to explore that, but it gave up screen time for that, for, you know, stuff with Bolin and other things happening. It was a funny episode. It was an entertaining episode. Was it my favorite? No. But it lands, like, the episode that follows it, squarely in the okay category. It's not the best, but it has good action scenes, and it has decent a decent enough plot. It's effective, not very, not particularly great, but effective enough, and it's got important story implications for the future. So, overall, I enjoyed it. It, it was fine. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. It was really funny, though. There were several very funny scenes in it, and that was, that was really entertaining as well. So, yeah, entertaining, funny, not the best, but certainly not the worst. I just have one question. Asami mentions her father. What about the other Equalists? How many of them are in jail? What's happened to the Equalists? Has, the, has all the Equalists feeling completely gone away? Does electing, just electing a president make that all go away? I don't... I don't know. They, the thing about me is I want to hear more about the ins and outs of Republic City and about the political situation. I mean, they created this big world. I want to hear more about it, but that's probably not going to happen. So like I said, a fine episode. You'll enjoy it.